Hi, Pat Battle with Living Web Farms here for another Resilience Daily um, session. And right now we're going to do a quick talk about Japanese beetles. They're here, folks. Right here on our echinacea is a pair of Japanese beetles doing what they do best, propagating. Well, what they do best is defoliate our plants, I guess. But what they do second best is propagate. Um, they can drive you nuts. We have good years and bad years. Um, la last year I think was pretty rainy in the summer in August and that really means probably not a great year. What gives them bad years is drought because they bury their um, eggs and the larvae hatch out in the soil. They have to be able to dig down in the soil. So the harder and drier the soil, the fewer Japanese beetles you have the next year. Um, there's not a lot of easy solutions. Milky spore was kind of famously the solution. But according to entomologist um, Dr. Richard McDonald, or also known affectionately as Dr. McBug, like all pathogens and organisms, there is a resistance that builds up over time. And so milky spore is getting about, I think, 15% less effective every decade or something like that. So it's not as effective because the Japanese beetles that can survive it are the ones that are reproducing. You can also use um, beneficial nematodes. They will move into the they, will, they have to be watered in during a rainy time, and there are specific parameters. Maybe we'll do a whole video on that. But they need soil temperatures between 60 and 80, and they need a gentle rain to get them in. Um, but they will actually swim into the larva and reproduce in there and kill the larva. So that's another way to solve the problem. The problem is you have a yard, and if there's a golf course nearby or lots of other yards, you're only controlling the larva in your yard, so it's not easy. Traps have gotten a bad name because they've been misused. You can buy Japanese beetle traps, you just don't want them anywhere near your crops and you only want them on three sides of a given property. They want to be 50 feet away for a perimeter of traps, maybe three or four around your property and then maybe one at about 25 feet to catch the strays. And that can greatly reduce the pressure. You can also use surround. Surround is micronized kaolinite clay and if you spray that on your plants when, before the Japanese beetles really get going, they'll arrive and they'll find it very dusty. It'll block their furicles, their breathing holes, and they just won't like your plants and they'll go look for some plants that aren't so darn dusty. So those are the easy solutions. The classic home solution is early morning when these guys are moving slow. Um, a dish pan full of soapy water and you just come and knock them in. You can knock huge amounts of them in and probably get control on a small garden. Um, they're actually quite beautiful. They are invasive, unfortunately, which is why they're hard to control. And I'm forgetting the exact name. I think it's the Eschema wasp. There's a there's a, a fly, not a wasp, that Dr. McDonald has propagated in several places. It's kind of an involved process. Um, my dream would be that the counties would say, we want to pay Dr. McDonald to, to go gather these um, fly eggs, um, or pupa, I'm not sure which, from a place where they're abundant bring them, you have to put them in a cage so they can live in the ground and you don't want the raccoons and the other digging animals like bears to eat them. They have to sit there through the winter, but when they hatch out, they lay their eggs in the neck of the female Japanese beetle, which is incredibly effective. They go for the female because she has more fat reserves and basically where that fly, I'm pretty sure it's a fly, Dick, correct me if I'm wrong, um, where that fly is, there's basically balance once again there is now a natural predator that gives control of the Japanese beetle. So that's Japanese beetles. I hope it's not a bad year for you. It's looking like we might be a little bothered by them this year. So far though, they're just showing up. It's part of summer when you see your first Japanese beetle. I think I saw my first one about a week ago. Um, and good luck with them. Remember to check us out on Instagram at Living Web Farms.